So I'm going to be introducing a topic called Predicting the Future of Mobile Device Management. My name's Dan Sabalski. I run simplywifi.co and I tweet as simplywifi. Hi, my name's Keith Parsons. Uh, I'm at wirelesslandprofessionals.com and I tweet under Keith R. Parsons. My name is Chris Little. I run wifiqe.com and also on Twitter is wifiqe. Sean Rainierson at S. Rainierson and wifigeeks.org. And my name is Jennifer Huber and I tweet under Jennifer Lucille and my Twitter profile has a link to my blog. Excellent. Okay, so jumping into it. Um, during the Airheads conference there's been lots of talk of, of MDM, MAM, MCM, every kind of M acronym uh, has come up and uh, the, the overlying theme is um, if I say traditional MDM I'm just talking about controlling the actual device, wiping the entire device, things like that. It doesn't really work in a BYOD environment because users don't really like all of their information being, being wiped. So it's kind of an overkill solution. Um, so we've seen things like Aruba's Workplace product, which is uh, involving uh, containerization. Um, and then we've also talked a bit about third-party integration with, say, ClearPass, pulling information from other MDM vendors to use that in your policies and profiles. Um, <clears throat> so I guess to, to lead off with a few questions is, what are you guys seeing customers doing with MDM currently, or is, are you seeing them use MDM currently? Because right now I see a lot of people talking about it. I see a lot of people saying, yeah, I think we, we need that, and nobody really buying it, <laughs> or not in any large scale. They'll buy and test it in the little lab environment, but they're not really um, going all out with it. Or, or they want to buy it and then stick it on the shelf and say, we have MDM, we're done. Yeah, yeah, there's a yes. checkbox on our yes. compliance, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I see the, the inherent problem too with that, and I think a lot of that stems from um, people are trying to solve a problem that they don't really know that they've defined fully yet. Um, so they think, ah, oh, MDM's a solution. I'm not sure what the problem is, but that's a solution. And therefore it ends up being much more limited just because of that problem definition not, not really being in place. Okay. Um, I, think, I think it's fear-driven, not really intelligence-driven. It's fear, fear driven. Fear is somebody in legal says if we don't do this, yeah. then we're going to do it. And so legal forces IT to come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. Or the board tells the CIO who tells IT, we have to have this answer. All these BYODs are coming on. Our corporate data is out there. Fix it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Rather than, oh, like Chris said, how do we define the problem? What do we mm -hmm. want it to happen? And it's, I think it's much more complex than a simple, you know, we have an MDM. Yeah. There's there's other issues in there. Who owns the data? Uh, what data do we even want to have released? Where is the data residing? Uh, there's a lot of potential solutions. The whole containers. <coughs> people go, oh, yeah, I can just containerize. Well, there's other issues mm -hmm. that that just itself alone doesn't solve. And, and that's a good point because um, a, a lot of, or, well, most organizations that I talk to, um, they don't really have a data classification process or any, anything in place, right? So, I mean, if, if you jump out to, okay, what are we protecting? If you haven't actually classified that data, it's, it's pretty hard to come up with policies around, okay, this is allowed out here, this needs to be blocked here. Um, so if I it's think, ours, it's protected. If it's not ours, but, I mean, that, <laughs> that's kind of the level of classification. <laughs> and I think there's yeah. a lot of mixture of data within companies as well. Like uh, a lot of companies will be sending sensitive data through email, <laughs> where the majority of the email, they really probably should do that as another method. Mm -hmm. uh, of another way of sharing that type of sensitive information and have it more defined and classified. Yeah, kind of like the, the demo we saw in Airheads where they used a separate web browser to pick up a separate email and then if you click on a link it stays inside of the VPN separately yeah. from the right. regular browser that's on the iPad. Right. I can just see that being so handy. I say on my phone right now if I need to check something on my network on a controller uh, CEO's wrap is being messed up or something like that. It's a, it would be a pain. I gotta pull out my token, get on here, VPN in, find it. You I know. think that's a big, I, big thing as well with it. Uh, with the whole issue is that a lot of people get used to the ease of use that their mobile devices have give to them, and to be able to get that type of separation off, you have to create a separate environment within their phone, which makes it harder for them to use again. And and, and will you they have don't like that? And will you have <laughs> yeah. parity with features? So, in the example, I showed, oh, yes, yeah, that was a dolphin browser. Mm -hmm. Can you do everything in dolphin that you can do in right. Safari? 
and if you can't, are there features in there that need to show up? Or I don't know how many how many sites have you been to? You click on and Safari won't open because they don't support it. Or do they support those special ones? I use Chrome, so <laughs> and there's places Chrome doesn't problem. work either. Yeah. It says. <laughs> um, so moving moving beyond that, um, what do you guys? Or what level of importance do you guys place on uh, third-party integration? So using information from MDM platforms um, to build your, your policies and profiles. And have you encountered people trying to do something like that already uh, in the market? Yeah, we, we have done that with a few clients. And I, I must admit, being that ability to pull information from different sources and use that to classify what's actually happening <coughs> on your network gives you a lot more visibility and uh, it's not as fully featured as say a SIM is giving you uh, visibility into that but having that type of integration in with the MDM certainly enhances the MDM product itself because one of the keys to, to actually monitoring mobile security is being able to monitor from the get-go and know mm -hmm. what's actually going on with the network. Yeah, I, think, I think that integration is critical is part of the, the feature we're trying to stop, as we discussed in, in a previous session, was where do you want to stop features from happening, I mean, traffic from happening at the edge, or do you want to go all the way back to the core, or wherever you're linking in the WAN? That MDM integration is going to allow you to know and apply other policy at the, at the appropriate location, including when they're off site and they're coming in over 3G. You'd like it to stop at a certain place as well. And, and for, for the integration, I know it's, um, if you can't, Give too many details about it. That's fine, um, but this, were you finding the integration was with corporate-owned devices that had an MDM agent, or are you finding that it's actually with BYOD devices that had some kind of MAM or MCM, something like that, or or even MDM? Um, sounds to me like both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, you're trying to pull the information from as many different sources as you can to give some sort of classification. So. You're, you're looking at information that's coming from your maybe your MDM or MAM vendor's device as well as what your authentication server is saying to, to what's going on or the logs in your firewall and pulling that information in as well and being able to use that to, to give you classification instances. Okay. And, and on this topic, just to extend a little bit, uh, just talking about it as wireless people got to realize what we're talking about is more than just RF and how do you design RF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As right. wireless engineers, we're thinking we're now tied, pulled back into identity and directory active directory usage and, and tighter integration into the rest of the network. So I, th I think there's we need to think about more yeah. of what our roles are. And that is a very key point: is that that wireless is becoming this much wider thing, which is about access and identity on the network and what people will have on their devices and where they go and that that whole sphere is widening the scope of what you're doing in wireless. So if you, you've concentrated mainly on, on doing deployments of, of wireless APs, you're getting pulled into an entirely different operation where you're interfacing with network people as well as with server people mm -hmm. as well as with end user people. and. That's a much wider gambit than just installing a wireless network. And that, and that speaks to, forgive me if I get his name, Paul DeBisi, mm -hmm. what, what he was saying about pulling in all these other stakeholders from other teams and collaborating from the get-go, right? That's going to become even more important as you... Yeah, just think process. about a, a sales force who reliant on a particular web application that they get to and they've all started using mobile devices for accessing it. And, you suddenly decide that that's something that you shouldn't be accessing from mobile devices, well, they're going to be screaming and you might not have thought of that. Yeah. The larger your company gets, the uh, harder it is to do these inter-team mingling. And, and I, I realize like my, my wireless team is over 20 people. Mm. And when we have to go to other groups, it, it's really hard for everyone to uh, wrap their head around one subject and even get in the same room and uh, discuss one problem and, and solve it the bigger your company gets, it's just hard. Yes. Well, very much so. to kind of finish up this section, one of the things from our discussions yesterday was you can mask a whole bunch of problems. In the past it was you can make a server seem faster by giving it more RAM. You could make your network seem faster by having a huge pipe. In MDM solutions, you can make it have more cap capacity in your wireless LAN. The better your wireless LAN goes, it gives you more options in MDM. 
you can look to virtualized apps rather than internal apps and it gives you a lot more things. So as wireless guys, we're like, okay, we're the, we're the, we're the, we're the, we're the, we can make the bottleneck go away just by making a better wireless LAN. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I think also um, one of the things to note at the moment that it's a very much a trend within the MDM vendors that are out there is they're moving from this traditional thing of focusing just on controlling an actual device, doing things like device wipe and mm -hmm. being able to, to have particular control over that device to, to focusing more on applications. And to me that's, that's a bit of a continuum that's going on from looking at it from a device level or a location from that device moving towards it actually focusing on the data. And I think that's the important part of mobile device control and security is focusing on what happens to uh, the corporate data that comes onto that device and having control over that and not worrying about the personal data that's on there. 